Hi, I'm Bianca Coker, and in this video, we're going to talk about scatterplot. You're going to learn more than you ever wanted to know about scatterplot in this video. One of the new math standards from the Adopted 2012 standards is 8.5C. The student applies mathematical process standards to use proportional and non-proportional relationships to develop foundational concepts of functions. The student is expected to contrast bivariate sets of data that suggest a linear relationship with bivariate sets of data that do not suggest a linear relationship from a graphical representation. Now doesn't that sound fun? That's what we're going to talk about today. Don't, don't turn off the video. Don't go anywhere. We'll be okay. So what you're probably stressed about in this particular standard, among other things, is this whole concept of bivariate sets of data. Well, it's really not that hard. Bivariate sets of data, think about a set of two related values or variables. For example, I have a height and I have a shoe size. The other folks in the studio have heights and shoe sizes. So for each person, we have two pieces of data. That's a bivariate set of data. They are related because they come from the same person, same date, same school, whatever. That's what a bivariate set of data is. And a lot of times they're related by date or person. For example, an XY coordinate pair is a bivariate set of data. Input output values, independent dependent values, students' ages and shoe sizes, ice cream cones sold, and temperature on a certain date. Those are all bivariate sets of data. And it's a little different from all our most of our other statistics because in those situations we have only a single variable. We have two variables about the same person, same date something that's similar. And so with that, we create a scatter plot. Now here's an example of a scatter plot. With scatter plots, we generally use the first quadrant of our coordinate plane and we just plot all of those coordinate pairs as dots. And we're not going to connect the dots because as you could tell in this example, that'd be a big mess. What we're going to do with that data is we're going to, and I always tell my students, kind of squish your eyes and look and see if you can see a pattern. So for this data, there's a trend line drawn with a negative slope through the data. Now remember, trend line and line of best fit are two different things. You can find a trend line just by eyeballing the data and seeing which, which way you think it's going. A line of best fit has to be calculated very specifically, and we're not required to do that this time. So looking at this trend line, what kinds of things we can say are that the two variables have a negative correlation. In other words, as one variable increases, the other variable decreases. That's a negative correlation. In some situations, we might have a positive correlation, and in that case, the trend line has a positive slope or is going up. In those cases, as one variable increases, the other variable increases. Now this isn't anything you don't already know because we've been teaching scatter plots with trend lines for years. But it gets a little bit different with this standard. In this standard, we're going to ask about whether something's linear or not linear. Well, the question I might want to ask is, if something's linear, why do we care? Or not linear, why do we care? Well, we look at this, ver this, this particular scatter plot, and we see a trend line, and we think this data has a linear trend. So that means not only as one variable increases, in this case, the other variable decreases, but it does so at a constant rate. A line represents data increasing or decreasing at a constant rate. The slope is the same all along the line. That decrease or increase changes at the same rate the whole time. And this helps us in our predictions. The whole point of doing scatter plots is to determine if there's a relationship between the two variables, and if so, can we make a prediction about the next bivariate set of data we're going to look at? So what else can we say? If two values seem to be close to the trend line, we can say that they have a, a tight or close relationship between the two variables. If they're pretty far away, it's not a very uh, close relationship, but we talk about that they are correlated, that they have that relationship. We never say that one thing 
causes the other, even if we suspect it's true, because a trend line and scatter plots do not prove causation. So, back to the standard. How do we contrast bivariate sets of data that suggest a linear relationship with bivariate sets of data that do not suggest a linear relationship from a graphical presentation or representation? First, we're going to look at that look for a linear relationship like a line and a scatter plot. So here's a scatter plot. Looking at this scatter plot, we might not think there's any relationship. When you squish your eyes up, it looks like it might be going up or not. I would say that this probably has a very weak correlation between these two variables, which is kind of surprising because this is a um, potential relationship between math SAT scores and verbal SAT scores for individuals. Each person has a math and a verbal SAT score, and we would think that if someone scores highly in verbal, they might also score highly in math. Or if someone scores high in math, they might also score high in verbal. Well, apparently, according to this scatter plot, I'm not sure that's even true. I'm not sure that there's a relationship between those two things, which is kind of surprising. Now, you might be arguing with me out there and saying, I, there's got to be a positive correlation. Good students are good students. And perhaps that's true. But it might be such a weak correlation that one is not a good predictor of the other. Does that make sense? So let's look at this next graph. This graph is more, the points are more tightly clustered. So it looks like the graph goes up and then kind of levels off. Does that make sense? So the question we ask is, is this a linear correlation? <laughs> if we put a line through these points, would we be as accurate as possible? And I'm thinking maybe not. Looking at this graph, I think we need a curve that goes up and then kind of levels off. And what does this tell us about this relationship? If we look at those two variables, it says that as the gross national pro product per capita increases, we're increasing our life expectancy at birth of our, of our children. But after a certain point, there's not much of an increase because we're in good shape. The kids are really healthy. So at that point, we're just adding to all the good stuff the kids get to play with, but we're not necessarily adding to their health health with our increased gross national product. So we have a curve there, not a linear relationship, even though it looks like it is very nicely correlated. Now here's another relationship, and they have actually drawn a curve on this data. We could put a line through it, but again, it might mean that as we get to a certain point, no longer does an increase in one variable cause an increase in the other variable. It seems like there's very little effect once we get to a certain point. So there's great effect in the initial stages where increase in one causes increase in the other, but not as much in the other. There's not that constant rate of change. So is it linear? Probably not. Now here's another one. Cigarette smoked compared with the baseline peak flow rate. If you ask your students, I bet you'd find a lot of them have been diagnosed at one point or another with asthma or some sort of upper respiratory situation like that. And they may have blown into a computer to find their peak flow rate. I know both of my daughters did that. So this comparison is looking to see if there's a relationship between cigarettes smoked and basically the lung function of an individual. And we see that the data has a, and this is actually a line of best fit. You can tell that they've calculated a very careful line of best fit for this. So this isn't just a trend line. So there's a negative correlation, which means as the number of cigarette smoke, cigarette smoke increases, those individuals tend to have lower base, baseline peak flow rate or lung function. Does that make sense? Now, does that say that smoking cigarettes causes this? We can't say that from a scatter plot. That's causation. But we can say, and we can kind of predict, that depending on the number of cigarettes smoked per day, what a baseline peak flow rate would be for a person based on data in a scatter plot like this. Now, because it's a line, then we think that that is a constant rate of change. 
and as we increase the number of cigarettes, we're going to have a constant decrease in our peak flow rate. So that might be a different statement we can make because it's linear. So let's go back to this whole causation versus correlation. Here's an example. It's really well known that shark attacks and ice cream cells are very highly correlated. That means as the number of ice cream cells increase, so do the number of shark attacks. That's kind of an interesting thing. So does ice cream or the smell of ice cream draw in sharks? That would be a good question to ask. But really, just because there's a positive correlation does not mean that ice cream causes shark attacks. It really doesn't mean that. It means that there is some other variable out there, and in statistics we call that confounding variable, that is related to both of them. Can you think about what that confounding variable might be? Think about going to Florida in the summer. It's hot, you want to go swimming, and you want ice cream. So really, it's that increase in temperature that's related to both of these things and making them appear to go together. Does that make sense? So we have a couple of cute slides. When you look at graphs and scatter plots, and even if they're tightly correlated, they're very close to our trend line, we really can't say that one is causing the other. But we can say that they're closely related. And just if you need to, have your students say this over and over again. Correlation does not mean the same thing as causation. Now, that's about everything I know about scatter plots for today. If you have any questions, feel free to call Region 10. Thank you and have a great day.